All right, so this uh, tutorial is to talk to you about how to optimize. Um, this is a very, very important step when it comes to preparing your files for the crystal. Uh, a commonly asked question that we get is, you know, how do we make our crystals look nice and bright uh, within the crystal? And um, so that, you know, it looks to be a high resolution image. Um, well, there's really three um, factors that go into uh, the final output. Number one is the optimization, which is what this tutorial is on. Uh, number two is on point spacing and how you um, set your point spacing. You'll find that in the tutorial um, that's titled How to Use Cockpit 3D. Um, and then finally uh, is on laser power. And laser power is really something that you need to adjust um, on your individual laser. But if you have any questions about that, uh, just give us a call. So these are the three things that are very important and it all begins with optimization. So when you get a photo, how is it that you can make um, your final output look, you know, really nice and um, clear and high res. So um, we're just going to show you how to do that right now. Um, if you're asking for a CAD or a DXF file, it's really important that you complete your optimization before you enter your order on the cockpit3d.com website. Um, because when you have that point cloud, essentially you're just sending it to the laser, so you don't really, um, you know, have any uh, option for optimizing it unless you want to um, use the uh, scene file that we send along with the CAD or DXF, and then it, you know you would have to optimize it uh, in the Cockpit 3D software. So again, if you're looking for a CAD or DXF, optimize before entering your order. If um, you're asking for a scene file and you're going to, you know, use the Cockpit 3D software then um, you can either optimize before or after um, you have a choice. So um, the first thing you want to do is you always want to crop the image according to what you've discussed with the customer. If um, you're um, getting an online order and you haven't spoken to the customer, then you kind of have to just be the judge in terms of what you think looks best. If the customer has said they don't want the knee, well then crop it so that it doesn't include the knee. Um, also, you don't want to send in a photo uh, that has any unnecessary um, part within it because our artists are going to spend time then designing 3D for an area that you're cropping out or not, not needing anyway. So make sure you crop it uh, according to um, really what it is that you need to have in your crystal. Uh, the next step is to convert this to grayscale. So the way that we see it right now is in color. The way that the laser sees it is in grayscale. So just change it to grayscale. And um, when you do, you'll now notice that the face actually looks quite gray. Um, and so when you burn it in crystal, the face won't look as bright. It will look gray if you leave it um, like this. So what you want to do is you want to brighten um, the, uh, the image. Now you can brighten the image in two ways. One is you can use an airbrush and focus on just particular parts of the photo. Or two is you can use the curves and just pretty much adjust the photo as is like that there. So you can do it in, uh, in really uh, one of two ways. Now let's assume I did the curves as I just did and um, I just lost the image, there it is. And um, we found that, well we've done the curves, one person is okay but the other person still needs to be brightened. So in that case you would need the airbrush because the curves applies brightening to the entire photo. The airbrush lets you isolate parts of the photo. So you select the airbrush. Um, in terms of your mode, you want to change this here to color dodge. You want to keep it at 20%, and you want to make sure your foreground color is white. And then you can oh, and also make sure that you select the correct layer here. And there you go, and you've brightened the face. Um, if you want to darken um, certain parts of the photo, let's say for example the shirt, then you can make sure your foreground is black change this here to uh, darken and you can change this here to a much lower factor say five percent and just go over it a few times it'll darken it I'm not sure if you can see it I'll make it a little more powerful let's go 10 and you can probably see that darkening there so you use the darkening for when it's white shirts you use the um, white color dodge for when it's um, dark faces and um, 
and uh, we're done and that's pretty much it so really um, it's very very fast I'm gonna go right to the top and do it again as I would if this was an actual order just so you can see how fast it really is so image crop image mode grayscale I take my curves and I brighten the image I then go to darken at 10% make sure I select the right layer oops and make sure that the foreground is black there we go and I'm done um, the other thing you want to do is make sure that you flatten this here especially um, if you're uh, doing this um, through cockpit 3d uh, meaning you've launched this through the cockpit 3d software uh, it needs to be a flattened image and then you would um, save it okay so if it's through cockpit 3d you'll click on the save button if you're doing this before having the modeling done you would click on save as you would save the file name it whatever you want and uh, and then upload it to the cockpit 3d website alright I hope this helps